Good morning guys. In today's video we're going to talk about electric wiring and how to wire your camper van for being off grid. This video is really a follow on to my controls installation video and in that video I said that I was going to produce an electrical wiring diagram and go through a simplified version of how to wire your camper van. This is the wiring diagram that I've created for wiring your van and there's a link for a free download in the description of this video where you'll also find product links to all the items that I've used. I'm going to break it down into small sections and we're going to build it up from start to finish and I'm going to talk through each of the relevant sections. So first of all we're going to start with how we're going to generate the electric. If you want to be off grid you really need to consider installing solar panels as long as you've got daylight you're going to be generating some form of electricity and although you've got a small sort of capital cost up front the solar system is going to pay for itself in no time at all. When we're travelling around Europe we typically pay between 5 to 10 euros for an electric hookup a day so if you can avoid that cost obviously that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. I've already done a video on how to size your solar panels. I'll put a link in the top of the corner of this video if you want to go and watch that. We won't talk about sizing, this is just about electric wiring. So you'll install the solar panel on the roof of your van and then with the 4mm PV cable that comes with the solar panel you'll wire into your van and I would recommend fitting a double pole isolator. Purely and simply because all the time that your solar panel is in the daylight it's going to be generating electricity and if you want to work on your electrics it's always advisable to have some means of isolation. So I fitted an isolating switch inside the garage. Now you could just have one large solar panel or you could have a number of smaller solar panels. Now I've actually got three solar panels fitted on the top of our van each of them are 160 watts, so I've got a total of 480 watts. And how I've wired those is I've wired them in series. There's a big debate on whether to wire them in parallel or series. I prefer to wire them in series. The reason being is that the voltage is added together. So when you wire them in series, the volts of each panel is added together and the amp stays the same so the cable sizes stay small and it's how all HV generation and national grid systems are run they run at massive voltages and small amps so it keeps the cable sizes small and that way as well in low light situations where each panel is generating a small amount of volts when they're all added together it gives you enough volts to give you a charge on your batteries it may be a small amount but with an MPP charge controller that will take that high voltage, bring it down to charge voltage and increase the amps. So I consider this to be the best way. Then you wire from the isolator in the same 4mm PV black cable to your MPP charge controller. I recommend using an MPPT charge controller. They're far better. They find the maximum power available at any one time. and They're far better than PWM. They're a little bit more expensive but you'll get the best use out of your solar panels. And some charge controllers like mine have a remote LCD display. You might want to put the charge controller somewhere more discreet and then have a remote display like we have in the living area of your van. And that comes with its own control cable and simply plugs into the controller with little RJ45 plugs. So that's the generation side, the solar panels and the charge controllers. We need somewhere to store that power and that's where we use leisure batteries. Now again there's a big debate about lithium or AGMs or different types of lead acid battery. I'm not going to go into that in this video but I personally have chose AGMs just purely from a financial point of view and the capital cost. So we need a set of batteries to store all this power in. That can be one very large battery or that can be multiple batteries. Now to connect your leisure battery to your charge controller you're going to need to use some thicker battery cables because what the charge controller does is it takes the high voltage from the solar system 
transforms it down to a lower voltage but increases the amps and with cable sizing it's the amps that determines the size of the cable the more amps you try and put through a cable the thicker the cable needs to be and that little device that you see in line on the positive side is a circuit breaker I like to use these for two reasons one they act as a trip and secondly they act as an isolator you can push the test button which breaks the switch which isolates the circuit they come in varying different fuse ratings and different styles as well but essentially they do the same job and it's far better than using normal replaceable fuses because if the circuit trips all you have to do is reset it you don't then have to go and buy a new fuse from somewhere now you might have more than one leisure battery I've got three leisure batteries each of them 110 amp hours so how you'd wire those together they're all 12 volts so in this case you would want to wire them in parallel so you need to connect all of the negatives together and all of the positives together and then if you've got more than one leisure battery what I would recommend is that you put the positive from your charge controller onto one battery and then connect the negative onto the far end of that battery string so basically you're using the whole of those three batteries you haven't got it connected just to one battery and that way you'll make sure that there's an even flow of current through all three batteries and you'll be charging them all more evenly the battery cable that you need to use is a multi-stranded flexible cable we don't use solid core cable in a moving vehicle because it could break and then you'd lose all your power if one of these tiny little strands breaks it's only a very small part of the cable so you're not going to lose a connection so flexible cables multi-stranded much better suited for moving vehicles so that completes our off-grid generation of power we've got our solar panels for our charge controller connected to our leisure batteries so we can generate electricity and we can store it now you need a bit of a backup plan for those days when you're not going to get a lot of solar it might be raining or it might be really overcast for a few days now in our van we've got a mains battery charger so in an emergency if we haven't got any solar we can go onto a campsite pay for a mains hookup and then charge our batteries with the battery charger the mains battery charger comes with a three pin plug and a lead I've installed a double socket in the back of the garage to plug that mains charger into and that is wired in turn to a consumer unit a small domestic consumer unit with a couple of trips in it that's just going to give you some protection on that mains shore power that's then connected to a socket on the side of the van and then with an extension lead when you're parked on a campsite you'd plug into their hookup power supply via extension cable to the side of your vehicle that's going to give you mains power the cable that you'd use to connect your hookup to the consumer unit and to the socket would be a three core 2.5 millimeter arctic blue cable and that would have a live neutral and an earth in it i've got all the details in the description of this video so that completes the generation side we're storing in leisure batteries and now we've got a backup charging facility via that mains battery charger so now let's look at how we power all the elements in our van as much as possible all the appliances in your van really want to be 12 volt DC so they'll run directly off your leisure batteries without you having to use an inverter but what you'll need is a blade fuse holder this is then connected to the batteries and then from this blade fuse holder you can connect all your appliances they use little blade fuses which are the same fuses that you get in your car or van they're really readily available and they're very very cheap and they come in a number of different sizes I've used a blade fuse holder that's also got a built-in neutral bar so that you can wire the positives and the negatives all to the same blade fuse holder they do come with just the positives and you may need to install a separate neutral bar so what you'd need is a neutral bar where you can connect your battery onto one end and then all your negatives will come back and you'll wire them all together 
And basically it's just to common all those negatives together onto one bar. We need to connect another fairly large cable from the batteries to the blade fuse holder. I would recommend that needs to be a minimum of 10 mil. That will give you up to 70 amps protection on the cable size. And then also fit another breaker to protect that cable and to protect all those devices. And in my case I've fitted a 50 amp breaker. The cable size always needs to be rated higher than your breaker or fuse size. Also connect the similar size cable to the neutral and then you'll notice that I've got all my charging on one end of the battery string and I've got my supply coming off of the other end of the battery string. So I'm charging at one end and I'm using the electricity from the other end. Again it will just make sure that I'm using all those batteries very evenly. So let's add some devices to this diagram that we're going to have installed in our van. We could have a 12 volt fridge. We'll have some USB sockets for charging your tech. We want a string of lights in the van, whether they be spotlights or LED strip lights. Roof fan and then probably a water pump. Now it's simply a case of running a positive and negative from the blade fuse holder to each of those appliances. In the case of a 12 volt fridge, you'll probably need to run a larger cable because it will have quite a high amps rating. So I'd recommend running a 6mm cable to your fridge. Then you'd only need to run a 1.5mm cable to your USB sockets, 1.5mm cable to all of your lights and you can wire those all in parallel so connect all the positives and all the negatives together so you don't have to run lots of cables back to your blade fuse holder just run one pair of cables out and then loop through each of the light fittings. If you wanted to control those light fittings with a switch, simply break that live and then install one of the little toggle switches. If you want a toggle switch with an LED light on it, you will need to run a separate neutral just to the switch so that LED light comes on. But having lived in a van, the less LED lights you've got on at night when you're trying to sleep, the better. So my advice is leave the LED light out. Wire 1.5mm cable to your fan and 1.5mm cable to your water pump. And then all that remains is to install the correct size blade fuses into each of those slots depending on what the amps rating is of those appliances. To correctly size your blade fuses, they need to be 25% more than the maximum amps for that appliance. So take the maximum amp rating for each appliance, multiply by 1.25 and then that will give you the rating that your fuse needs to be. And then just go slightly higher and come to the nearest round figure. So that completes all the power for all the 12 volt devices. But you may well have some equipment in your van that runs off 230 volt like mains voltage. Our TV in our van runs off mains voltage and also if I want to plug my laptop in that also runs off the mains. So we do need some 230 volt electric within the van and the way to get that is by using an inverter. What the inverter does it acts like a huge transformer. It takes the 12 volt DC from the batteries and then increases the voltage to 230 volts and changes it from DC to AC so it gives you mains power. So we install an inverter and then we'll connect that also to our battery string with another breaker. Now in this case the inverter can be really big. I've got a 2000 watt inverter or 2 kilowatts. So the cable that you need to install on the batteries needs to be really big and in my case that needs to be 35 millimeters and I've got a 200 amp breaker on the positive side to the inverter. Because I've got 35 millimeter cable connecting to the inverter, the interconnecting cables between the batteries also needs to be 35 millimeters because potentially I'm pulling power through that whole battery string. So those interconnecting cables that we install to parallel the batteries together they need to be rated at your highest rated appliance. So they all need to be 35 mil cables. So that completes the wiring for our off-grid van. I've tried to keep this schematic as basic and as simple as possible. It's essentially everything that you need to be living off-grid. 
you've got solar generation, battery storage and a backup mains generation. There's a copy of this schematic for download in the description as a free PDF document. Also all the equipment that I've used in this schematic I've got links to where you can purchase that also in the description of this video. I hope that's helped to simplify the electrical wiring in your van and if you've got any further questions please do leave them in the comments section below. If you found this video to be helpful to you please give me a thumbs up Make sure that you're subscribed and hit the little bell symbol so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.